Hey, what's up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery Podcast. And man, we have a, a, a three times the charm. We've got uh, Mr. Chris Voss here with us uh, for the third time, which is amazing. What a, what a, what an honor. And then we've got uh, his, his new business partner with a new book that they wrote called The Full Fee Agent, which is right up your space and my space, uh, Mr. Steve Schull. So what's going on, gentlemen? How you doing? Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to the conversation, throwing out some more good, good karma into the universe. Awesome, man. Well, we are we are we are streaming on uh, three different places: LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. We're also here on Clubhouse, and and then we're going to be releasing this out in uh, on iTunes podcasts everywhere where you listen to podcasts. So make sure you check us out, and make sure you go check out Chris and Steve, and, and connect with these guys as well. All right, so quick bios, and then we're just going to get into it. All right, so uh, you guys. For who, if you don't know Chris Voss, he's the former lead FBI hostage negotiator, dynamic speaker who debunks the biggest myths of negotiations. Uh, Steve, uh, Chris engages all groups with uh, captivating stories, insights, and useful tips for business and everyday life. He's been featured on ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox News. Uh, China's featured in Forbes. Uh, Chris, not China. Why did I say China? It's just, <laughs> Chris has been featured in Forbes. And see, sometimes we just can't take ourselves too serious, Chris. Right? And uh, and, and Fast Company. And man, his book is called, that I'm holding up right here, by the way, guys. Uh, Never Split the Difference. Uh, absolutely fantastic uh, book. Now, it's uh, Steve, who is uh, also amazing. Uh, man, I, I, was, I was talking to Steve before we started recording. He has uh, been a real he coaches real estate agents. He's been doing that since 1993. Um, and Steve uh, sold residential real estate in Fullerton, California in his first year. Check this out. Him and his partner closed 53 transactions in his second year. They were on pace to close 100. Uh, he came up with the idea to create a coaching program that marked the beginning of the real estate coaching in 1993. In 2007, Steve was one of the founding partners of Telus Properties. And he helped the company open four offices in Beverly Hills. Come on, man. Why, why you got to sell homes in Beverly Hills, bro? I, I mean, I'm stuck here selling these 250, $300 houses. I, I moved up to 500. I thought I was doing big things. And, and he's in Beverly Hills. So awesome to have you two here. And, and Steve has, um, Chris, yeah, Steve has coached um, hundreds of agents and helped them shorten their sales cycle, uh, set more appointments, and ultimately close more sales. So gentlemen, appreciate you guys spending some time here today with me. Our pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, Great to be here. Be. All right. So before we start, I my wife did tell me there was one question, Chris. I had to ask you: is uh, is do you ever have to negotiate with your wife? Well, I, I have a, <laughs> a, a girlfriend. I'm in a committed relationship, uh, Wendy Starland, and uh, a model, songwriter, singer, entrepreneur. And um, we negotiate with each other all the time because negotiation is about a better relationship. It's about trust. It's about always being there for the other person saying trust you with stuff. So, yeah, we, we negotiate all the time. Um, fortunately, you know, uh, she always wins. So it's, mm. a, it's, it's a great relationship. Yeah. That's that's what I learned over the last probably five years of my uh, marriage is like it's usually better when she wins. Right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, is she with you right now? <laughs> I see you looking over to the side. Well, as, as it turns <laughs> out, yeah. She's, she's standing there with a with a machine gun. Yeah. She's nice. got the cue cards. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the cue cards. I love it. All right. Well, say hello. And all right. So so um, talk. Tell us about the book. Um, the book is called The Full Fee Agent. Love the title of that. I actually the the club we're in right now is actually called High Ticket Masterclass. So one of the things I do, Chris, is I teach people to get their value, right? To, to charge what they're worth. And that's what Genius Network helped me with, frankly. So talk to us about the book, The Full Fee Agent, which either, either of you guys can jump in on this. Well, I'd, I'd love to start with Steve's thoughts on it because he, he's in the process of bringing the Black Swan Method into real estate and revolutionizing the industry. Well, let me... Uh, <clears throat> I'll back up and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of tell the story, <clears throat> excuse me, of how Chris and I got together. Uh, one of my clients had given me Never Split the Difference. And one Saturday afternoon, about seven years ago, uh, 
I started reading the book. Obviously, the title drew me in quickly because in real estate, everybody splits the difference when it comes Always. to negotiation. <laughs> right. So, I, I started reading the book, and then somewhere in the book, I had this aha moment, which changed everything for me. And it was the idea that you can't overcome emotion with fact, logic, and reason. And at that point, I'd been coaching realtors about for about 25 years, and everything I did was to take emotion out of it and put in fact, logic, and reason. And all the scripts I wrote and everything I did, it was all very linear. And all of a sudden, I had that aha moment. And I threw out my playbook of 25 years. I got on the phone with, uh, I tracked down Chris's son, Brandon. And we had a conversation. And then he got Chris on the phone. And I said to Chris, everything that you wrote and never split the difference applies to real estate. And we started doing some workshops together. We started with a eight week program on negotiation and we continued down that path. And then about three years or so, uh, we got together to write this book, the full fee agent. One of the things that we're both very big on is, getting paid, as you said earlier, what you're worth. And this is a business, real estate, where the entire industry, every force imaginable, is trying to turn an agent into a commodity. Mm -hmm. And basically, they're trying to get people to work more to make less. And that's not something we subscribe to. So the, the book that we wrote together is all about how you can get paid what you're worth. I love it. I, 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 I'm like, literally I I'm going to go get a copy of the book like right away uh, so that I have a copy of it myself. And cause yeah, that's, that's exactly what I work with real estate agents on. It's exactly what I teach um, to, you know, people outside it, entrepreneurs and business owners. So Chris, what, what, what's your, what's your thoughts? Uh, what, what do you want to add to what Steve shared with us? Well, it's just, I, I love I love what we're doing. And in point of fact, like a, a, a good residential real estate agent is a bargain. Might be the best bargain on planet Earth because they're in the midst of helping people navigate probably more, the most difficult emotional transaction of their lives. I mean, there's stats out there that are the five most stressful moments in anybody's life. One of them is buying or selling their house. So it's this high stress environment and then compare that with, in business, what's a finder's fee? Like if, if you bring two people together and you help navigate a deal, is a finder's fee is typically 10%. So real mm. estate agents at full fee are still a great bargain. There's, there's no reason they should ever be cutting their fee. And all right, so is there a reason to not to do it? Yeah, of course. But then how do you not do it? I mean, that's what we really get into. We really get into how, how people... In an opening conversation with a potential client says, I'm a full fee, full service agent. And then it stands, it sticks. You know, the, every trans, every conversation with a, with a potential client is, 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 a, is an audition. They're testing. They, of course, they're going to ask you to cut your, your fee. They've been conditioned to do that. But if you can't stand up for yourself, you can't stand up for them. So the, the coaching practice is really getting people to believe in themselves, give them very specific tools of how to maintain their position, how to be great ambassadors for the clients and for themselves, and how to make a great living and to take the stress out of it. Uh, like, like Steve, you were telling me once, you know, one, I think one of his coaching clients was like, I'm going to. I'm going to watch Netflix this weekend. Is that OK? <laughs> is, that, is that what they said, Steve? That's exactly it, because all of a sudden. They're getting their time back. One of the things that Chris says all the time, it's not a sin to lose business. It's a sin to take a long time losing business. And with the methodology that we teach in 15 minutes or less, and this is not a magic formula or a magic pill or instant anything. 
It's just that you have the ability in a very short period of time to get to the truth about whether someone wants to work with you or not. And you have an entire industry. Real estate is an, is an industry that's built on a false premise. And that premise is that agents win or lose business based on their pre the listing presentation. We're talking about getting listings for a second. The whole idea that you're going to walk into someone's living room and you're going to get their business based on your presentation and your ability to present. The whole industry is built on this premise and it's simply false. Mm. When you get that phone call that agents love to get, we're thinking about selling our home and we'd like you to come out and uh, talk to us and give us a presentation. You know, agents love that call. They get excited. Now they're going to put in two to four hours of prep work or more. Then they're going to go out to someone's living room and they're going to spend another two hours in the living room and they're going to give them everything they know for free. They're going to tell them everything they should do, the price, the home preparation, the marketing, everything. And then at the end of that presentation, and anyone who, who is in real estate knows this, the client's going to say, wow, you've given us so much to think about. Give us a couple of days and we'll get back to you. And that agent leaves that meeting not knowing, do they have the business? Do they not have the business? They're on pins and needles for 12, for 24 hours, 48 hours, a week, whatever. And then they get that phone call. And the truth is, the truth is, prior to making the initial call, that seller either already knew who they were going to work with or they were leaning mm -hmm. strongly in a direction. It has nothing to do with the presentation. Now, we're not talking 100% of the time. We're talking 80% or more. And, and one of the things that we're, we're coaching agents to do is to only focus on those opportunities where they have an 80% chance or higher of getting the business. And we call that being the favorite. And the other 20% or less, that's when you're the fool in the game. And if you don't know you're the favorite, then by default, you're probably the fool in the game. So what we're teaching people is how to find out, am I the favorite or am I the fool? And you can do that on a Zoom call. You don't need to go out to the house. You don't need to make a presentation. And I've got one client in Northern California, in San Francisco, in a highly competitive market, in the last four years, she's taken over 100 listings, and these are just normal residential real estate listings, well over 100 listings, all on a Zoom call, all at 6%, keeping three and a half. And you're listening to this, and you're going to say, that's impossible. However, it's not impossible. It's entirely possible. And anyone who subscribes so, to what we're teaching that's what they can experience in their business this is not a one-off we have lots of agents who have totally transformed their business less stress less hours more productivity so 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 let, so if again you, you're talking to somebody that has 22 years real estate sold over 1100 homes uh so you, you what, know what we're talking about. I do. I do. I, and I also know, though, that there's been a big press on the industry that people, because of all the entry only companies, because of the discount companies, there's 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 a absolute press. So and, and I think what you were saying is it's it's you don't focus on the you focus on the 80 percent that that you're the guy. Right. Is that what you're saying, Chris, uh, Steve or. or how, how do you get beyond that? Like if, cause there are people that are shopping agents, right. And they're going to say, well, hold on. The other guy said he was going to do it for, for 4%. Why am I paying you this? I mean, does that come up or like, if that comes up, how do you guys handle that? Well, of course it's going to come up. Now the issue is, do you destroy the deal by not giving in? Like that's a test. And if you can't stand up for yourself, if you can't hold the line for yourself, you can't hold the line for them. Any, any savvy client is going to test you. See if you give in. 
And that's and if you start giving in, then you just pat, you fail the test. The test is can you stand your ground politely without blowing up the deal? And that's really what, what what's a hostage negotiator supposed to do? The bad guy says, look, if you you know I got I got four hostages in here, I'm gonna start killing them if you don't get me a, 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 an airplane. And we go like, oh, okay. Well, I, I guess I can't stand up for these hostages. I got to get you that airplane. No, we talk to people in high stress uh, environments, and every negotiation and every conversation in residential real estate is a high stress, difficult conversation. And we don't give in, and we don't blow up the deal. And so, yeah, of course they're going to test you. Are you going to fail that test? They want to see if you can stand your ground. They want to see if you can be polite. How are you going to be their, their ambassador for their best interests if either you're rude or if you give in? And that's part of the testing process. I love it. Can you would would you guys either of you guys be willing to do a role play with me and I'll be I'll be that seller? I didn't I didn't tell you we were doing this ahead of time, but I, let's let's, uh, let's test you guys out and see how this goes. That's, you 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 go, you're going up against Steve like he's he's, all right, he's, he's got his he's got his a game. All right, hey, let's all right, Steve, come on, let's roll, man. So I right. so I, I'm a fan, right? I'll, I'll I'll say that ahead of time. I know who you are. I'm impressed with your stats. You've done a lot of business. I already did my homework. Okay, so you're you're coming out now. So I'll, I'll give you that. Okay. So. So you're calling me up and you're thinking about selling your home and you want me to come out and meet with you. Yes. Or, or we're meeting. It's up to you. You, you, well, you no, can... I want to sell on the phone. I say, I'd love to come out to your home. Okay. However, if you don't mind, uh, before I come out to your home, would it be impossible to set up a zoom call? Will not take more than 15 to 30 minutes so I can get a better idea of what your situation is. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. Okay. And in that, that's the first test. If you get pushback on setting up the Zoom call, that's the first indication that you may be the fool in the game. Great so tip. Anyone, if Great anyone tip. wants to push back on that, then that. that's my first sign. I'm, I'm not the favorite. Because if I'm the favorite, they want to talk to me. So they're not going to turn down that opportunity. So that's the first call. So, and if I have time, I can say, you know, you know. So what if, well, let me, let me pause you for a minute. So what if I said, because me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a high D, everything's about time, right? So what if I said, well, Steve, Steve, I I don't have time for Zoom, but I want you to come out and look at the house. Like, I'm just being sincere, right? Like, does that, right? Do do I still have to get on a Zoom? Let me jump in and reinforce what Steve is saying here, because, you know, the, the, the vision drives decision. And so there's there's no shortage of data that says before they speak to you, half the people's mind is completely made up. There's the human decision making. They don't they don't call you while they're making when they've made up their mind. They've already made up their mind. So vision drives decision. They got they got a path in their head. They got a favorite in mind. Now, you're a time is money guy. If it's your favorite, you want to have that conversation because it moves you Saves forward in the, in the pattern, the progress that you've already set out in your head. This is a guy I want to work with. I might be able to save time right now by having this conversation because if I got to get this guy to come out to my house, I got to schedule that. I got to make sure I be there. We got to line up calendars. And logistically, it's far easier to line up a Zoom call on calendars than it is logistically lining up a visit on a house. You know, he's got drive time. I got drive time. Does he want to come out in the evening when I want to have dinner? So your time is money calculation actually with the favorite leans towards the Zoom call because it's easier for you to execute. Now, again, time is money. If this is not the person you want to deal with. You ain't doing that Zoom. You ain't doing that Zoom call because it's a waste of time. Now, this mm -hmm. is a subconscious reaction on your part, but time is money. Like bang, as Steve said, this is the first big test. If you don't do that Zoom call, you're getting, you're not getting very strong indicators that, that you're the fool. So, so you guys saying if they don't do the Zoom call, then you're just not going to bother going out. It's like the pre qualification, right? You're, you're right. just like 
here, here's a different way of looking at it, David. Um, I played in the NFL for four years. And what Who'd you, you play learn for? to do – say it again. Who would you play for? Uh, Miami Dolphins. Oh, cool, man. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt again because he's always very quiet about this. Yeah, wow. Well, I, yeah, I had no idea. A, Steve didn't just play for the Miami Dolphins. He was a Super Bowl captain. Super Bowl cap. I don't think the Dolphins won a Super Bowl, did they? No, we, we lost. You were on the team that played in the Super Bowl? <laughs> Super Bowl 17. We oh, wow. Washington Look at Redskins, that. John Riggins, off tackle. Anyway. Well, good for you for going things, there. Yeah, One of the things you – in the NFL, you've got to learn to read clues. You, every week before a game, you, you get a scouting report, and it's like this thick. And – if it's third and uh, third and five, and they come out on the left hash mark in a brown formation, you know that 32 percent of the time they're going to run this play, 12 percent of the time they're going to run that play. There's all these probabilities, and you have to you have to know all this stuff so that when you line up, you're reading what's going on. You're anticipating what's coming next you got to take the same philosophy into real estate. And no one has ever explained what to look for. And in the situation that you're, you're just outlining, you get this guy on the phone and he says, I don't have time. I need for you to come out. He's giving me a lot of clues that are telling me I'm the fool in the game. Now, real estate agents, they're not even thinking favor to the fool. All they're thinking about is how do I get my foot in the door? How do I get my foot in the door? They're not evaluating, is this a high probability opportunity or a low probability opportunity? The clues have always been there. And th this is what drew me in to what Chris is teaching. Again, the whole industry is based on this false premise that the playing field is level. And all I have to do is show up and give a better presentation than any of my competition. That's not how people make decisions. They're not making decisions based on fact, logic, and reason. They're making decisions based on emotion, based on personal preferences, based on their past experiences in life. And I'm just there to read or on the phone reading, okay, based on what their personal preferences are, do I fit that profile or not? And when you learn what to read for, then all of a sudden the clues are all there. They're all there. And when you get good at it, as I said earlier, in 15 minutes or less, you can figure out, am I the favorite or am I the fool? And you're going to drop a line. Once you got a beat on this, you're going to say, would I be wrong to assume that we're going to be working together? Would I be wrong to assume that we're going to be working together? And in that moment, that's the moment of truth. Because if the answer isn't, there's only two answers. Yes and everything mm -hmm. else. It's either yes and you get an instant yes, or they're going to start you know, squirming a little bit and giving you a vague response to that, which is another clue that you're probably the fool in the game. And so... This whole methodology and it, tactical empathy is, is, is what Chris brought to the forefront here. And it's, it's the missing piece in sales. As salespeople and all of you out there listening know this, you've been trained to understand what's going on with your prospect. You know, what's the, what, you know, what is it they want to do and why? However, once you figure out what they want to do, then all you're trying to do is sell into that. You're trying to take your stuff and sell into that. The missing piece is once you understand what they're thinking and feeling, then you have to make them feel understood. And no one's ever taught this. Mm. And yeah. no well, one's going to listen to anything that you have to say until they feel understood. So most of the time, think about, you know, any real estate agent going into anyone's living room and they sit there for two hours talking about all the things 
that they're going to do for that prospective seller. And the truth is, the next guy or the next woman is going to go in and say the same thing. And the next person is going to come in and say the same thing. And if you look at the presentations themselves, the font may be different. The graphics may be different. The colors may be different. The brand may be different. However, what's inside there is the same for everybody. So mm. how is this seller really making a decision? It's not based on that information. It's based on whether that person lines up with what their personal preferences are. And those preferences are personal to each prospective seller. So, um, so Steve, we got about 20, we got 20 people on clubhouse right now and, um, we're going to open it up in a few minutes. Yeah. We got some, some, a few agents that do a lot of listings right now. And, uh, and so we're going to have gone. a couple questions. No way. No way. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, so, no, I, don't, I, I don't know. You know I, I, I'm you know, with you on market, this. My market is different. I get it. Well, no, I don't know. I don't know. Not, not, not some of the agents on here. Cause I, cause I know them, but, um, I think most, I, and, and that, that's actually something I wrote down. Like what's the resistance, right? I, we, we, you know, I want people to grab a copy of your book. Right. So I think, you know, based on what you just shared with me, you're, you're, gonna, you're asking like, what's, what's one question though, that you would ask in your, your zoom to kind of, but you shared one, right. The, the assumption that they're going to list with you. Right. What was that well, question early, again? I hadn't heard that one before. You're going to start out. You're going to say, you know, if, if you don't mind, share with me what's going on. And now we're listening. Are they, you know, opening up and sharing or are they being guarded with the information? That's a clue. Then I'm going to ask them, you know, in your mind, you know, what would be the ideal outcome? What, what is it, you know, if you could write the script, any way you want, what would that look like? Hmm. And again, if they give you any of that nonsense, well, that's why you're here. We, you know, you're the expert. You, you know, we want you to tell us, you know, what to do. Another clue, fool in the game, fool in the game, fool in the game. So I'm going to ask them, you know, what are they looking to accomplish? Why is that important? How is that going to make them feel to get that outcome? And I'm, I'm not there to make them wrong in any way. I know what I think. I don't need to hear myself talk. I want to find out what they're thinking and feeling. And then once I really have a good un understanding of what it is they want to accomplish, is, as Chris said earlier, vision drives decision. Once I understand what their vision is, how they see this process unfolding, then I'm going to make them feel understood. So it sounds like, it seems like, it feels like, and I'm going to summarize and paraphrase what it is they're thinking and feeling. And what we're doing, we're targeting a that's right response. Not your right, that's right. And when you hear them say, that's right, that's right, that's exactly what we want. Now you know that they get that you get what they're thinking and feeling. And then you'll actually see them relax. Their, their shoulders will come down and their, their energy will change. And then you're going to come at them with, you know, I'm curious, you know, of, of all the real estate agents you could possibly call. Why me? Mm. And we call that proof of life. Why me? Now, again, we've got to listen because what they're going to share with you is what is their perceived value of you? How do they perceive your value? And if they say, well, are you sold our neighbor's home. We talked to our neighbor. Our neighbor said you did an incredible job. We went on online. We read all your reviews. We looked at your website, you, you know, we love the way you, you know, uh, uh, present properties on, you know, if they give you all these reasons, that's probably an indication that you're the favorite. If they, if mm. you go, why, you know, why me? And they go, you know, we threw a dart at the dartboard and your name came up. That's probably a clue that 
You're just the fool in the game. Oh, we got a piece of mail. We were driving around the neighborhood and we saw your sign. The, the, there's no real value there. So the, the why me question is, is a really important part of that. Then w- once you have an understanding of why they called you, then you're going to say, would it be wrong to think that you're probably interviewing other agents? You know, agents are always, you know, do I ask if they're interviewing other people or not? And agents are worried. I, I don't want to give them that idea that maybe they should be talking to other people. Chris answered that question definitively. De- definitively, you always ask, you know, would it be wrong to think? Not are you interviewing other agents? Would it be wrong to think? We, there's something we haven't gotten into, asking questions, no oriented questions, because people love to say no. So would it, would it be wrong to think you're interviewing other agents? Who are you interviewing? Why them? And again, if they don't want to answer this information, what well, we'd rather not say, we'd rather not get into that, another clue. You're probably mm. the fool in the game. When you're the favorite, think about this. When you are the favorite, they have no reason to withhold that information from you. They have no reason to play a game with you. If you're the favorite, they're going to act like you're the favorite. If you're the fool in the game, guess what? They're going to act like you're the fool in the game. And they're they're going to tease you. They're going to dangle the carrot in front of you as long as they can because all they want is free consulting. And one of the things we, we teach is, it's a chapter in the book, no free consulting. Again, goes against everything that every real estate agent has been taught. Real estate agents live off of hope. I'm going to give you everything I have for free, hoping that you'll pick me. How pathetic is that? Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, uh, I'm going to bring you into the questions. Armando's flashing his microphone like a straight maniac on Clubhouse. I see Beth. Uh, we got we got Sean. All real estate agents. So uh, hopefully we got a good connection. What's up, Armando? I Let's get one, one, one succinct question, please. Howdy. Yeah, it's Armando Realtor in Houston, Texas. Uh, man, I'm a big fan of Chris Voss uh, and his books, and I got audio everything. So I, I've been really hammering down on these no-oriented questions because uh, I really believe in his philosophy of, of the rationale why. So um, I guess uh, question. Wow, you put me on the uh, – in the hot seat here. So I <laughs> guess when I was the, flashing, <laughs> I know. So um, I, I guess one question that you, you talked about as far as not getting those, are you the fool in the game question answered? And if they don't answer that, how deep do you go into trying to get those answers? And then what, mm. when you get those answers, how do you decipher whether you pivot and and the percentage in your head that okay maybe they they are I I'm you know the one that they're just not sure versus I'm the fool in the game I'm solid this is a big waste of my time I hope that was clear yeah good question do you guys understand the question yeah. Steve okay perfect again this this label it, it, it's called a label we could also call it a mislabel and you can use it either way. Would I be wrong to if if I feel like I'm the fool in the game, I might mislabel that situation and and insert, would I be wrong to assume that we're going to be working together? And if I'm the fool in the game, you're going to see it right on their face instantly. And because if I'm the fool in the game, I'm not going to get that. You know, yes, we're going to be working together. You're going to get some other answer. And then from there. I just want to exit gracefully. One of the other things we teach is the last impression is the lasting impression. So we're never trying to make anyone wrong. And the moment we feel like, okay, I I am the fool in the game. It sounds like they're moving in a different direction. Then I want to exit gracefully. And one one of the things we can you can do is, you know, when they want information from you, one of the ways out of this is say, look, it sounds like you have some great agents that you've lined up to speak with. 
Why? Because remember, we're on a Zoom call. I'm not in the living room. You know, why don't we do this? Why don't you meet with the other agents? And after meeting with them, if you're not confident or comfortable that you found the right person to represent you, why don't you reach back out to me at that point in time? So now I've, I've, I've given them an out. And this is another thing that we want to do. We give people an out to see if they take it. I want to give them the opportunity to say, no, we're going to go in a different direction. I'm not there to convince them, no, you should work with me. I'd, you know, I want to give them the out to get out of it if they want to get out of it. Chris, any, anything you might add to that? No, it's, and, and it's critical for your pipeline to take this approach on a last impression is a lasting impression. Because if, if you're not the favorite, what you want to know is, can I become the favorite in, a, in, in the future? What, what's the point of fact that a real estate business? And when, when Steve and I were working on this uh, book early on, we went through several different writers. And one writer, as we started to point this out, she says to us, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, in the last eight years, I've been on the mailing list of one real estate agent. And I've conducted three real estate transactions in those eight years, all with different agents and none with the agent who keeps mailing me her newsletter, emailing me her newsletter. So what's that tell you? In point of fact, real estate agents are not good at keeping a pipeline going and not becoming and staying a trusted advisor. You know, they're, they're, they're making promises they can't keep. They're listing a property for a price that they know they shouldn't be listing it for, which then automatically they get the they they shove the seller or the buyer into the transactions, creating all this bad blood. And what your job is, is to set yourself up for the long term so that you're never the agent that creates bad blood, makes people feel a sense of loss, make make people feel shoved into deals. And so what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for the odds are that whatever agent was their favorite probably ain't going to last as a favorite. And they're either going to get fired or they're not going to get the next transaction. You want to leave an emotional experience with them that this is a straight shooter and someone who will stand up for me come what may. And that's why this positioning is critical when you, when you're not the favorite, that doesn't mean you don't position yourself for the next go around. And that's why Steve's description of how to give them the out and to move on will leave this great lasting impression so that you ultimately you build a great pipeline. But it, you can't you can't change the fact whether or not you're the fool now. What you do is you take the long term and you develop a reputation for being an honest straight shooter who stands up for people and themselves. And so this whole process is about positioning yourself to eventually become the favorite and just recognizing what the situation is right now. Great, great tip. Um, great question, Armando. Appreciate that, man. Um, yeah. And, and another, another, you know, going back to Steve, your answer too, it's like, that's one of the reasons why it's important you're on zoom. So you can see their face, right? You can see their facial expressions to, to see which clicked when you said that. So thank you for the question. We have time for one more question. Cause I know we, we have a, a hard stop at, uh, in about seven minutes. So I'm going to toss it over to Shantae, who, who is always helping me here on Clubhouse. Shantae, did you have a question? I did. I actually had a couple of questions, but I'll, I'll, I'll narrow it down to one. Um, so when you're, when you're negotiating things and you're Why new, you? when you're new to reading people, so oh, sorry, so, so, my kids are in the car. <laughs> Um, I, I know how to read a lot of the people who are, you know, uh, they're, they're numbers people, they're, they're like, you know, statistics and analytical. I, I can read those kind of people like right off the bat because I grew up around them. I've known them for a long time. Um, but if you're trying to read other types of people, what are some of the telltale signs that you go off of? Chris, why don't you take that one? Well, um, it's first of all, really listening to your gut. I mean, the telltale signs are there. All the, all the questions that Steve was talking about, the real issue is not what the answer is, it's how they answer it. 
And when there's, regardless of who they are, when there's hesitation in the answer, there's something there to be worried about. When, when, they, when they come right quickly with the answer, there's less to be worried about. And if you start listening to your gut instinct and then you're practicing on a regular basis, you know, small stakes practice for high stakes results in all your interactions with, with your Lyft driver, with the person that serves you coffee in the Starbucks, with the grocery store clerk. I mean, you've got daily interactions where you have the opportunity to get all sorts of reads on everybody around you. And if you're getting these reads on everybody around you, you're also simultaneously having more pleasant interactions with the people around you because people love for you to actually see them, to recognize them, to see them as a human being in your brief interaction with them. So if you start looking around for your small stakes practice all around you, your, your gut instinct for reading all types of people comes to you really quickly. And the, the thing I would add to that, uh, as a side note, one of the things that we teach is get in front of everything, anticipate what's coming, and probe and test what you're thinking and feeling. Put it out there. If you, you, if you think the situation is X, probe and test to find out, is it, is it that? If you think it's Y, Probe and test. Get in front of things. Don't wait. If you've got a gut feeling, go out and probe and test that hypothesis. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Shante. Great question. Um, I think we could do one more. Uh, you guys okay? If, uh, yep. You guys good? Okay, cool. Yeah, so anybody else have a, have a question on the stage? Just give me a mic flash. Otherwise, I'll just take it back. Okay, we have, uh, we have Beth, so we'll go to you, Beth. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, David. Um, this has been an amazing room. Um, I was just going to flip it around that, you know, everybody wants to be the listing agent, right? But it's okay to walk in and not want to be that listing agent and come from, you know, contribution to them. Hey, you know what? I don't think we're going to be able to work together, but I have somebody else that I know. I have a huge team, a whole network of people. It might not be my company, but I have somebody that I think will work with you. What is your guys' take on that? Because I've done it multiple times. Because I, I can tell right off the bat that I, this is going to be draining. Why am I even going to work for that You know, $15,000? It's going to be exhausting. I'd rather take the 25% re, you know, referral fee. Right, I, thank you. I think you, you raised some great points here. One, the root of almost all evil in real estate is this idea that something is better than nothing. And that's, that, that's what most agents, that, that's their mindset. Something is better than nothing. And people don't make a distinction between good business and bad business. They're out there trying to do every deal. All deals don't matter in the same way. All clients don't matter in the same way. So I, I, I think making the distinction between what is good business and what isn't is is very important. Chris, your comments? Uh, I, 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 love, I love that thought to begin with. I mean, what you're really talking about there is fit and uh, you know, and, and David, you rec you recognize the Joe Joe, yeah, Joe of course. Elf. Genius Network you know shirt. Exactly, we're gonna go. And yeah, Joe <laughs> Joe talks about people that are hard, annoying, lame, and frustrating. They're halves. And Joe says, "Don't do Joe. Don't do business with halves. Do business with people who are easy, lucrative, and fun." And all of this is in, involved in that. And then yeah, don't don't hold yourself hostage by feeling like you need to do have this deal because they're difficult. And then however you decide to deal with that, whether you want to provide a referral uh, or you just exit gracefully, uh, you know, that's an individual choice. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Thank you guys on Clubhouse. We appreciate you guys. We've had 65 people on Clubhouse. We have uh, 24 in here now. So amazing. Uh, we actually have two online as well on, on our, our streaming. So it's uh, cool. So, so I want to toss it back to you guys. Um, I got one question. You guys can both answer, and then we want to know how we can get your book and anything else we need to know. So the question I'm going to give both of you is, uh, what is going to be the biggest resistance uh, from what, what you guys are sharing when it comes to real estate agents? Well, 
again, most people let fear run their life. And when we started this seven years ago, like I read Chris's book, Chris, you know, Chris has been doing this. However, everything he introduced was none of this existed in real estate. And for example, when, when you have to deliver bad news, which is something agents hate to do, how do you deliver bad news? I've got some really bad news. What's that? You are not going to want to hear what I have to say. When, when we first introduced that line, oh, I could never say that. I could never say that. So the resistance is this is all going to take you way outside of your comfort zone. And that's a beautiful place to live. And so the resistance is you've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Love it. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Chris, what about you? What, like, what is, what's, what's going to be the resistance? Well, this is so fearful. I mean, what, what we get people to do is like, all right, so don't change your behavior. Just run the numbers and ask yourself your gut instinct before you go out on a presentation. What's my gut really telling me? Am I the favorite of the fool? And then line up with how often you get that presentation with what your gut's telling you. Like, don't, don't believe it's just run the numbers. And consistently people say, you know, I got all the presentations when I, when my gut told me I was the favorite and I, you know, something to, you know, I got them all. And you know what, when my gut told me I was a fool, I didn't get any of those. Mm. Maybe my gut's pretty accurate and I didn't have to go out on the ones where I was a fool. And maybe I could have confirmed in advance and all that time making a presentation when I was a favorite was wasted time. Take a real no nonsense, look at your numbers. And then when the numbers start jumping out at you in a really big way, ask yourself, Hmm, maybe this was predictable and maybe I am wasting a lot of time when I don't need to. All right. Awesome gentlemen. Well, I, listen, I appreciate you guys this time today. And this was a phenomenal conversation. I, I wish we had more, more time. Like this could be two hours all day. Um, how, how do people get a copy of the book? What's the easiest way to do that? Let's go on amazon.com. It's uh, also available on audio and it will absolutely transform your, your life. And who doesn't want to get paid what they're worth? You know, be open to that idea. Amen. And kind of give us your, your final thoughts, you guys. Maybe, uh, you know, 60 seconds or less. Like, here's, here's what I, I want you guys to get from, from being and listening here today, listening in. Look, you, 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 can, you can have a better life. And this is, this is really the full fee agent is the avenue. It's your starting point. It's the gateway. You want to follow up with either me or Steve. Steve's coaching actively. It's a community of people that are reinforcing, enjoying being a real estate agent, not being held hostage, not working 24-7, not taking calls at 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday, just really enjoying the profession for what it was originally envisioned to be, putting people in great homes and really enjoying it and, and just, just not living a, a life under constant tension. And I, I would say to everyone who's in real estate, probably the most important decision you make in your real estate career is what fee are you going to charge? Because in the end, the fee that you charge in many ways is going to determine when you can retire and with how much money you retire with. And if you can charge, if you can make a full fee your standard, you don't have to work as long and you're going to end up with more money in your bank account. When you have to work more to charge less, uh, to, when you have to work harder to make less, that's not a good formula. And that's the path that most agents are going down because they have a short-term focus, not a longer-term focus in their career. They're chasing a deal, 
not building a business. Amen. Well, I appreciate you guys giving some extra time here. I know we had planned about 45 minutes. Looks like we were about 55. So thank you so much for that. Steve, I would love to have you come in to uh, talk to our, our real estate university. Um, if you're interested at some point, we've got about 35 agents we can have you come in and talk to. So I'll Absolutely. connect with you on that. And yeah, and I just want to thank you, Chris. It's great to see you again. Thanks, thank David. you. Um, and Steve, uh, we, we got to do this again, though. I'd love to do this again with you guys. So appreciate both of you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy your day. Thank, thank you. you.